I'm a huge fan of Pilates. I don't do it myself because it's too hard for me, but I know that it's a very useful tool and method to help build up core strength. One of the challenges with Pilates though, where people who have sciatica pain can uh, experience some irritation is the over involvement of the hip flexors. And so what are the hip flexors themselves? They actually attach on the front side of your low back and wraps down into your hips. And what it does, it is responsible for flexing your hip, but also is responsible for getting your back a little bit more arched. And when you're doing, whether it be a reformer, mat, or the other uh, variations of Pilates, there's going to be a fair amount of core engagement. And when your core gets tired, your hip flexors can get a little overworked and it pulls on your back. So here's an example. Say we are doing the uh, Pilates 100. And so the Pilates 100, and this is going to be applied to many of the movements in Pilates. I know that there's going to be a lot. And so the focus specifically is how the hip flexors actually engage. And so when you're doing the Pilates 100, whether you have your feet down or up, or even if you're doing these flutter kicks, and this encourages, like focuses on engagement of the core, the focus throughout all this and what you should be doing is pressing your low back into the floor by actually pulling your shoulder blades up. And that allows your hips to actually stay relaxed because the moment your back arches off the ground, you can put your hands right here. What's pulling your back up and what's holding your leg up are your hip flexors. And so as you're trying to hold, you see how there's so much motion in my low back and my pelvis that it actually causes a fair amount of pinching. And I notice this a lot in my Pilates practitioners. And so an easy way for us to actually remedy this is by focusing on pulling the rib cage down, flatten the low back out as you're doing all these other motions. And you're gonna start to notice that your abdominal muscles start to really fatigue. And that's the purpose. As you're starting to fatigue and you're building up that strength and endurance, your goal is to make sure that that back does stay flat. You don't have to jam your back into the ground, but what that should be, what you should be focusing on is engaging your core and allowing your back to be nice and stable versus having all that extra moving. So a way that you can fix it is by lifting your shoulder blades up, chin to your chest, but then also, if you really need to, flatten your, think about tucking your pelvis to keep everything nice and tight. Now, in the event that you can't do this, it's totally okay to rest as well. You have permission to rest during your sets if need be. Hope this is helpful.